Stephen here, aka Biggles Brewery. Cheers all. So I've just managed to brew again, which is probably the sixth time in uh, six or so weeks, which is a new record for me. Last year I probably brewed six to ten times in the entire year. I just wasn't brewing or drinking that much. But with this B80 Pro, it's just quite addictive. So uh, I'm really enjoying my brewing again. And well, as you can tell, there's a lot of videos out in the last few weeks, which is more than I've ever done before. Uh, I've got a bit of footage of the brew day today. It wasn't too much because I had the little one running around and uh, helping out. So yeah, we're probably just screaming in the background and half of it. So I do apologize, but you know, it's a sunny Sunday afternoon. We had a barbecue going and she was brewing and four year olds will be four year olds and you know, got them riding with it. Whilst she helps me brewing, it gets the wife into a good frame of mind because, well, it takes her off her hands and I get to brew some more. So it's always a good thing. Uh, today I brewed my my version of the Clockwork, Brewdog's Clockwork Tangerine. Uh, put a quite an interesting spin on it. I take out the Pale Ale Malt and use Red X. I think it's Best Malt Red X and um, you end up with a beautiful red beer with the, the flavours of the Clockwork Tangerine which are quite nice. Um, hot bill and uh, a little bit of tangerine extract. Go light on it. It's uh, quite pungent stuff. Probably, yeah, probably underdo it and then always add more to the keg if you think you can't quite taste it. My uh, recommendation there with the tangerine extract. Nice simple brew day. The added advantage of the Red X malt is it needs um, about four mash steps. I think it's 52 degrees, 65 degrees, 72, 78. Can't remember, I will put the recipe up in a minute or so. But it's, yeah, about 100 minutes mash. So we had a barbecue. I put that on just before we, or before I started grilling the meat and then sat, ate, relaxed and it was time to mash out so it was great for us or great for me could get away with doing two things at once which as a man is quite hard to do. The added advantage of all this brewing has led me to a couple of conversations with the wife where she likes the bar but she doesn't like all the brewing equipment in it and uh, finally managed to convince her to get myself a third shed which is going to be solely just for the brewing equipment and brewery. Um, it's not going to be a particularly big shed, it's going to be a seven foot by seven foot corner shed which will be enough for the B80, um, hot liquor tank, three or four conicals, a uh, glycol chiller and a small freezer. But I'm not going to have any seating or it's not going to be super comfortable in there, it's going to be more practical than anything else and then have the bar which is, will be next door for sitting down drinking but it's going to get all of the grains and all of the stuff out of here and just make it a nicer space in there <coughs> which will hopefully lead me onto a well probably won't do a video of building a shed because it's just four or five walls or whatever it is sticking them together and whatnot but I'll probably do a couple of videos of me getting it out and then I'll do a bar tour when it's finally cleared up here. I don't know if you can hear that I put the in the fermenter about four hours ago and it's already going 10 to the dozen just used the US 05 they look perfect I think I've sort of narrowed down my numbers from a couple of wayward brews ago 23 litres into the fermenter um, I was just over 10 bricks so 10 42 I think was what I was aiming for I was there or thereabouts just had a couple of quick questions with regards to cleaning for the guys that got their brew tools and stuff. I've got the three-way valves and I always clean after I finish brewing and then before brewing. So I probably don't need to, but I always do. How often do you guys take off the three-way valves and soak them in PBW or Chemisan or anything like that? Do you do it once, like every brew, every other brew, every five brews, every ten brews? Because I've been of cleaning them fairly regularly but I haven't taken them all off and disassembled them like I've seen some other people do. 
And do you go as far as to take the pump off and look at that inside or just rinse that through? Right, cheers guys, I've got about three or four minutes worth of brief footage, so enjoy. Right, I'm using the recipe system because there's quite a few mash steps. It's the first time I've actually used it. So filled it up with 35. Start heating now. Covered. Perfect. Okay, I've just put the grains in. has lowered it down a little bit so hopefully it'll get up to temperature in a few seconds. Uh, it's four mash steps in this. 30 minutes at 52, <laughs> 30 minutes at 65, 30 minutes at 72, 10 minute mash out at 78. Right it's up to 78 degrees on its fourth stage mash out. That's looking nice and clear. Now just to cast the colour out. Right, just pulled the mash pipe out. Now I'm going to sparge. Right, it's just sparge with a couple of kettles. So now I'm going to whack heat straight back on. And the um, brutal recipe called for a 70 minute boil. Just going to check my pre boil gravity. Take a pipette for and then uh, throw it in the fridge for a little while. 70 minute hot petition is 6 grams of citra, 2 grams of Simcoe. Hot petition is 5 grams of tenum, 5 grams of chinook. 2 grams of citra, 2 grams of Centro, Simcoe, and a protoflock. Okay, in addition, I'm just sanitising the water chiller. Alright, just cooling the water down now to 80 degrees before I drop in the final hop stand. It's 15 grams of Eldorado, 8 grams of Mosaic, 5 grams of Citra, 5 grams of Chinook. Right, we're at 80 degrees, just going to pop it in now. Going into the fermenter at 25, 26, using Cross Maloof US 05. Aerating the water, so I'm putting in the yeast. 